Cuba really represents the heart of the Caribbean. It's the largest island in the Caribbean, and it's pretty uh, hard to protect the larger Caribbean without having uh, direct involvement of, of Cuba, since it's so interconnected. There's still an amazing amount of pristine biodiversity. Cuba's flourishing reefs help regenerate marine life across the Caribbean. But with economic and political currents changing, Cuba's reefs are beginning to experience the increase in visitors and development that have degraded other Caribbean reefs. And those aren't the only concerns. Cuba, like most other areas of the Caribbean, has experienced significant climate impacts on their reefs with bleaching events. We're seeing significant losses of these corals in and around the Caribbean as a result of this repeated temperature stress. The coral is part animal and also part plant or an algae that lives inside it. Without that algae and during times of heart bleaching they actually have a compromised immune system. Due to Cuban and U.S. policies the Conservancy led research trip was restricted to a survey expedition. The scientists were not allowed to take samples but could collect observational data. There are a number of techniques now that Nature Conservancy has been pioneering we're actually propagating surviving corals. We can actually think about whether the species of corals here can be either transplanted to other places and be helpful, or we can learn of the right environmental conditions that are here. What's going to happen in Cuba over the next 10 years could lead to some challenges for the, uh, the biodiversity and other things that we uh, as conservationists really care about. If we can cultivate corals now, we want to pick a coral that can bounce back after a hot episode, or maybe tolerant of conditions of the water, of the oceans of the future. With the right controls in place, uh, I think it could actually be a new model for you know, compatible development and, and, and sustainable growth. The survey expedition showed scientists the rare beauty of Cuba's coral reefs. You've never lived until you've really seen a healthy reef because it really is beautiful and just like going through a forest that might have shrubs and may have branches and may have big trees. I hadn't seen that since 1966. It was flashbacks from when I was a teenager. There's a, a, a great opportunity to influence uh, the next 10 years such that that biodiversity is uh, protected or at least enhanced. Can we get marine protected areas and fisheries management in, in such a way that it presents a new model for uh, not only the Caribbean, but for the world. <laughs>